okay? Hey! What's up, you guys? My name is Delilah, if you don't know already. I am a pro makeup artist when I'm not working my regular job, and my YouTube channel is mainly on beauty, but we do like to have a little fun over here. <laughs> In today's chit chat, get ready with me, we're gonna be talking about the new Netflix limited series, Jeffrey Dahmer's Story. I don't want you guys to think that I'm turning my channel into a murder mystery and makeup, movies and makeup, no. When I do my chit chat get ready with me's, I like to talk about a wide range of things. I have a interest when it comes, don't come for me, I have an interest when it comes to serial killers. I'm very very sorry for the victims and the victims family. The fact that you guys have to relive this over and over because they keep coming out with series and movies and now it's all over YouTube. So the way I got into this when I was younger, I was quite a kid. I went to school, got home, sat on the floor, draw. At night time, I would just flick through movie channels and see what was on. And a Dahmer movie popped up. It was pretty old and it wasn't as gruesome as the series. The next day, I told my brother about it. I was like, oh my God, I saw this movie. You have to see it. And he's like, oh yeah, Jeffrey Dahmer. Like that's based on a true story. I was like, what? based on a true story i'm like this motherfucker actually did all this shit? i started watching the interviews and i started learning more and more about him and i was just so confused because he looked so normal and it, it was just strange behavior that i've never seen before and i was just so interested reading and researching about these kind of people you go into a rabbit hole because you're just trying to figure out why i watched the entire thing it's a really great series I felt it was terrifying when I was watching the movie I was I, I felt like I was watching a movie I'm like oh whatever like this is totally fake this, the acting was amazing it just felt so real it felt so freaking real and I felt like I was there this time they didn't glorify Jeffrey Dahmer they gave the victims life they weren't just victims they showed who they were, their family, and that made it even more heartbreaking. Damn, this is a really tough thing to talk about and I'm not even, like I can feel my eyes watering up a little bit. Give, give me a second, let me just refresh. So let's talk about the series. When it comes to his mind in the series, they kept making it seem like he was a strange, really shy boy he's a little kid at this point he's in school and you know back then how we used to give you know how back then we used to give teachers apples instead of getting his teacher an apple he got her a jar of tadpoles i think they were you know little things like that i'm like okay that doesn't make him a serial killer he's just different in the series, they try to make it seem that the reason why he is the way he is is because of his parents, mainly because of his parents. Well, the parents were in a terrible relationship. They were arguing almost every day. I think there was a little abuse in the relationship as well because the I remember the mom, she had a knife. He was telling her, put the, put the knife down. I heard like a smack or something, but they didn't show it. Kids being around that shit, they soak it up and they kind of mimic it. Then after that, I guess the dad started to feel a bit neglectful when it came to his son because he would argue with his wife and then he'll leave I guess to like catch a breather or whatever and he felt like he wasn't really spending time with him when his dad actually tried to spend time with him he went and showed him roadkill I don't know why his dad would be interested in something like well well that would have been a sign right there because okay yes he's a boy and boys are into gross things but roadkill that shit stinks that shit fucking stinks and it's like if my dad was to take me on a drive and show me roadkill and we actually get out the car like few feet away from it because i went hiking one time and we had a long way to go until we saw that roadkill but i'm telling you i smelled it from far and i'm like what the f is that like it smells like ass like stinky stinky f ass like unbearable stank ass for him to actually smile at it in the series and enjoy it and really like it that's a f red flag right there 
the motherfucker never got into taxidermy ever like if you're interested in that yes get into taxidermy but he never got into that he just got into slicing slitting these animals apart feeling taking the intestines out feeling it this motherfucker was obsessed with that shit. When he was getting interrogated they they sent him to a psychiatrist the psychiatrist was asking him a whole bunch of questions the psychiatrist was asking him do you have damn i didn't bring no concealer i'll be right back in the series he was talking to a psychiatrist the psychiatrist was asking him would he get aroused when he opened up an animal when he would see the intestines and he was and he said yes and then, and then he was like, was it sexual? And he was like, yes. Yes, when I will hold them in my hand, I'll look at it and feel it and it has a shine to them. But with the real interviews that I've seen, I didn't, I didn't hear him talk about any of that. So this is what was said in the series. Then throughout his life, like his teenage years, while he's hanging out with his dad or when he's hanging out with his grandma, they keep asking him questions about girls. You and your friends are always talking about girls, right? Oh, you have a girlfriend. You guys look at Playboy. Like, he keeps asking him because I guess during those times, like, being part of the LGBTQ community was awful. It was considered... Parents didn't want their children if they were gay. Everything that he was thinking of, like his fantasies with torturing people, I feel like he's like, okay, is this gonna make me normal is this gonna get them off my back is this gonna make me look normal if i like girls if i have a girlfriend like is this the way i'm supposed to be so there's a scene where he tries to right now right now to um playboy and he can't he can't do it he doesn't he can't do it he leaves the room for something and then he goes back in his room and he tries again he's trying he's trying and he just can't do it but then his mind wanders and he starts to think of intestines and he finally <coughs> i'm like okay he isn't into girls or guys he's just into body parts but his preference was guys and it's like he was ashamed of it but he liked whatever because of the series also i didn't know i learned this too i didn't know and it's so upsetting the fact that they call him an intelligent person because he got away with it he didn't get away with it no he didn't okay he was getting away with it yes but the reason why he was getting away with it was because of the police because of the times he was using the out of his white privilege like he knew that he could get away with these certain things because he was white he was living in a certain neighborhood that nobody gave a f about he was real sloppy with the way he was doing things because the n was never sober he was always drinking and because of that he got sloppy a lot of his vic well a few of his victims got away he was just a good manipulator he knew how to yeah he just knew how to manipulate and he always stood calm and steady. That's why those dumbass cops didn't suspect anything. Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> if that motherfucker tried to do that shit now, he would have been got caught. But because the racism, the homosexuality, the neighborhood that he was living in, he was literally getting away with murder. I didn't know that the dad left. They were going through a divorce, the parents, but the dad left. I didn't know that he was just living with his mom and his little brother. Because he was out doing shit. So they never really showed his living situation. In the scene, they just showed that his mom was leaving one day. She was like, oh, I'll be back in two weeks. There's a big pot of whatever the f I left for you. Like, you'll be fine. But the bitch left them alone for three months. For the whole entire summer. And that's when he got his first kill. When you watch the series, but then when you watch the real interviews, not only with Jeffrey Dahmer, but his parents too, it's like, what is the true f story? This is the shit that freaks me out. Because it's like these shows, these movies, they show one thing. Yes, they add things that aren't true to make it more interesting, but there is some truth to it. But the f interviews is like what what okay that's when he got his first kill and that's when everything went out the window 
At one point he did stop for a few years, but only because he couldn't continue. There was no way for him to do it. He didn't have the tools that he needed to do what he wanted to do. So like I said, he's talking to the psychiatrist. He explains the texture, the shine, how he feels about it. There's this part that fucked with me. In the series, the police, one of the police asked him, do you hear voices, Jeff? And then he was like, I'm not insane. You're not insane. So what the f are you? And that's what had me thinking. Other serial killers, they don't take accountability. When you ask them a question, they talk about satanic things. They talk about being possessed. They talk about things that they worship. Clearly sat down and said, I am not insane. It's just a compulsion that I have. We're gonna switch over to the real interviews. He's taking accountability for everything that he's done. He regrets it. He feels bad. But at the same time, I know he doesn't feel bad. I know when he's talking about it, he, he gets an excitement. Certain questions that you ask him during those interviews, and when he answers, he does something with his mouth. First, he confessed. He felt like he deserved the death penalty he wanted the death penalty he didn't want to be in jail for, for 999 years he found god in prison but the interviewer is asking you if we was to let you out today would you do it again and he said yes so remember how i mentioned in the series what the psychiatrist was asking jeffrey the real interview he asked him the same thing he was like what did you get out of dissecting animals? Did you get an arousal? He said, yes. Was it something sexual? He said, no. But in the series, I feel like that was something that was false. In the series, when he was, right? And then when he thought about the intestines, that's when he, but I honestly think it was just his homosexuality. I felt like that's what aroused him, men. With the intestines part, I feel like that's something that made him happy, that brought him joy, that brought him love. But his preference was men. Because when you look in his apartment, when you see pictures of his apartment, there's pictures of men all over the place. The interviewer also asked him, what was your favorite part while committing all of these crimes? Like, was it the killings? Was this, was it that? And he was like, no, 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 no. The killings was a means to an end. That was his least favorite part. He didn't want to do that. I guess that's why this dude would just black out and forget everything that he's done. And I somewhat kind of believe it because when he got his first kill, he was really nervous in the series. He was really nervous. He was worried. He was like, no, 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 no. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. But then it, it, it was kind of like a switch. Like at one point he felt like he wasn't dead. He was like, come on, stop playing around. Like wake up, wake up. Like he was getting angry. So it's like maybe he didn't enjoy the killings because he tried to do that zombie mummified shit, which is something that I don't want to talk about because that's sick. He came up with something, watch the series or the documentaries, whatever. He came, he, he, he came up with something kind of like a lumbotomy uh, procedure where they wouldn't die, but they would act like a zombie. When I watch these interviews and then when I watch the series, I didn't know about that one victim that was deaf. That was the saddest shit ever. This victim was treating him differently. He was calm around him. I honestly thought that things were gonna change. I thought that it was gonna be kind of like a Ted Bundy situation where Ted Bundy had his girlfriend, but he was doing what he was doing with other women. I don't understand why he did it in this series and in real life because of the real interviews. Because when he explained why he mummified them is because he wanted control. That's all he cared about. All he cared about was having control over these people because he felt like he never had control as a child. This victim was not letting him control him as nice as he was. As much as he loved him and cared for him, he didn't give a f about the victim's needs. It's like he has a switch where he does act normal, but then there's a switch where he's like, no, I don't have enough control. I'm gonna have to kill your ass. 
the reason why I wanted to create these mummies is because I wanted complete control. I wanted to do anything and everything that I wanted with these bodies. I didn't want to kill them. I didn't want them to be gone. I wanted them to stay with me forever, but under my control. So I'm thinking, oh, maybe he just wants a submissive. No, he said he did this because he doesn't care. He doesn't care about what his victims want. He didn't want to tend to their needs. He didn't want them to have a mind of their own. Like he literally just wanted a zombie. What is that called? The father didn't want the doctors to take his brain to run tests to see what could have caused this and why. They just left it a mystery. I would want to know if my child was like that. I would want to know because was it something in my genes? Was it something in my man's genes? Or was it something that triggered it? Here's the confusion with all of this. So when it comes to a serial killer, you associate them with dead animals, with them dissecting. They try to make that a reason and they try to, they kind of try to blame the dad. And then the dad tried to blame the mom because the mom was taking at least 26, 29 pills while she was pregnant with Jeffrey. And then like on top of that, in the series, they made this bitch look psychotic. Like she was talking about UFOs and aliens. When I mean, I do believe in aliens and all that, but she was talking about wild shit in front of Jeffrey. Bitch had a knife, like come on and in front of your son like come on my theory is the reason why he turned out this way i honestly feel like it is due to his mother because of all the pills that she was taking that probably caused some mental issues and then his father confessed that he had similar fantasies and dreams as his son i feel like we all have intrusive thoughts but most of the time we don't do them. And the dad never did, but Jeffrey did. A reason why I feel like that didn't really play into his illness is because they have another son and he's perfectly fine. I feel like it's because of all the pills that his mom used to take, the roadkill, it piqued his interest, the intestines. And then leaving him alone for the summer if he wasn't alone, he wouldn't ever got that first kill. And you know what's really scary? Jeffrey Dahmer manifested his first kill. That is terrifying, okay? That is fucking terrifying. In the real interview of Jeffrey Dahmer, he was saying how he had this fantasy of picking up a hitchhiker, taking him to my house and having my way with him. And it was perfect. It was perfect. His parents abandoned him. He was drinking like crazy. He was by himself in the house for three months, drinking like crazy, had no guidance, had no one checking up on him. He's driving around the same path every single day. And he keeps driving by this one runner. This is in the series. And he's hiding in, and he's finally like, okay, I'm gonna do something with this dude. He's hiding in the bushes with a bat, pops up, he doesn't do anything. He's too afraid to do it. You see, like he does have this compulsion. The thing was, is that it wasn't heightened yet. This is why, this is why I say he really could have been saved. Just the term of events, like it was just going downhill for him. Just his parents leaving him alone and not even checking up on him, it was a wrap. So then he's driving down the same path again, runs into the hitchhiker and he's like, hey, what's up, dude? Like I'm going to this concert and blah, blah, blah. You think you can take me? And then he's like, yeah, totally. Like we can go over to my house, smoke some weed, drink some brewskis. Back in the day, dudes are dudes. You see a dude with glasses in a car, he's, he's like, chill and relax and like nerdy of course you're gonna think he's not gonna kill you and he's offering you to take you to this amazing who was it pegasus the person wanted to go see pegasus or something like that they were hanging out having a good time 
And then the dude started to realize the time. It started getting later and later. And he's like, yo, I'm going to miss the concert. Like you said, you were going to drive me, but we're still here. So Jeffrey just didn't want to let this guy go. Like he just kept saying, come on, I have more weed. Let's smoke another one or let's have another beer. Come on, let's do 10 more push-ups. And the guy is getting irritated. And he's like, no, like you said you were going to take me. Like, like, why are you stalling? Why are you trying to keep me here? Like, what the f and Jeffrey keeps trying to convince him and then out of nowhere he kisses him on the lips and the dude gets pissed because he's, he's like yo I don't go that way Jeffrey's still trying to convince him as soon as this mother turns around Jeffrey grabs the weight bing hits him over the head kills him instantly but before he killed him too he was telling him he was like no like don't leave me I don't want to be alone like like I love that you're here with me like please don't leave please don't leave and he's like what the f are you talking about like what's wrong with you hold on let me do my brows and i'll be right back because it's gonna be hard for me to talk while i do my brows so this is something that really like pissed me off watching the um the series and then watching the interview the real interviews his mom wasn't taking accountability for shit it makes you think who's telling the truth who's lying the way this woman treated jeff in the series the way the way the father spoke about the mom in the series is like she didn't even love him she was even jealous that she was even jealous that she was spending more that jeffrey was spending more time with his dad than with her even though his hobby was disgusting she still wanted to feel included but the bitch was nuts so it's like the fact that she was trying to say oh he had a good childhood nothing bad happened he was perfectly normal he wasn't shy he wasn't this he wasn't that and it's just like bitch so what happened during the interview i feel like she was close to even denying that that she was taking medicine that she was being prescribed shit while she was pregnant she was actually taking them so she was trying to say that oh no i wasn't taking pills i got injected by something but i don't know what it was bitch you know what the f it was because every time the doctor is going to inject you with something or give you something they explain to you what it is so yeah she was she was basically trying to paint a pretty picture that there was nothing wrong with jeffrey's childhood and this and this and that like no that's bullshit bro she's only saving her own ass she 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 doesn't want to be looked at a certain way but she's making it worse for herself and then the father the father wrote a book and the interviewer was saying he wrote this in his book and wrote this and wrote that and it's like the interviewer didn't understand because it's like this is her husband so it's like the husband is telling the interviewer all of these things about his wife and she's just denying it all you can tell she's hiding something and let's go back to his intelligence which was very false the way he manipulated he did it he knew what he was doing because of the because of his mannerisms like he was very he was just very dull nerdy awkward quiet you always feel bad for him when the scene came up where his father was like open the box in the series this is how the scene went down i think they were downstairs and he was like let me see that box jeff let me see the box and he's like what box and he's like stop playing with me like give me the box it's my box and then he's like no grandma gave it to me and this and this and that and he was just refusing to open that goddamn box as he should because he's hiding something in there and he's petrified like oh my god this is my dad i have to do what he says or he's gonna me up or he's just gonna take this box and open it and that's it like my secret is out they just kept going back and forth and he's like all right you know what i'm gonna go downstairs i'm gonna get a screwdriver and i'm gonna open this shit stupid ass mistake and that was false the father went downstairs came back up and then and then jeffrey was like oh i found the key <laughs> it's like why are you letting your son get away with shit whatever so he's like oh i found the key by that time that he went downstairs, he already stashed whatever he was hiding in the box. Then he put Playboy in it. So yeah, he wasn't he wasn't smart. He was about to get caught. He was about to get caught. But that was in a series. In real life, this is what happened. They went up to his room and his dad was asking him to see the box. 
they were going back and forth he was like i don't care like open it like i'm your father open the box and then jeffrey's like what the hell like i can't have a little bit of privacy he's like i can't I can't have this many inches of privacy like if I can't have this then what can I have like just really arguing that he doesn't want to open this box and he just wants to be very private about his things because he's ashamed of it his father didn't go downstairs without the box the father took the box he took the box to the basement to get a screwdriver to open it and then Jeffrey went outside started pacing going back and forth he's going crazy because he's like oh my god this is it he's gonna find out but then he's like i can't let him like there's no way he can't find out right now so he went and followed his dad to the basement he stood by the stairs and then he went and apologized to his dad he's like i'm so sorry dad this and this and that blah 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 blah, blah. he was talking about it and then he gave him back the box Took it to his room. He had a severed head and genitals inside. Took it out and he put Playboy in it. During that time, like when shit like that was happening with them, I felt like the dad had a bit of suspicions. I know the grandma had suspicions, but she was close to getting um dementia and stuff. And he even got aggressive with the grandma too, which I did not like. Another interesting thing too that was false, but I don't know. I don't know. So his last victim right he survived and that's the reason why he got caught that's the reason why he got caught because the victim survived and um and he went to the police and the police finally fully went to his apartment and searched everything and found the pictures and that's when they were like okay you're under arrest the interesting part about it is that he wasn't gay he wasn't gay and then i don't know if yeah, I don't I don't know if he was considered gay in the show because he was in the gay club and the way that they had him moving in the house so that he could get away, a straight man wouldn't do that is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, that's something that they got wrong. What do you guys think when it comes to all of this because, oh, this is really pink. I need to get another palette. What do you guys think of this because just to sum it up, I honestly feel like it's because his mother was on pills, his father was showing him roadkill, then he was left alone in this house. The reason why he got his first kill was because he was alone in this house. Him being alone all the time and being neglected as a child, the, his victims, he wanted to be close to them. He didn't want them to die. He didn't want them to disappear on them. He always wanted them there. He always wanted someone in his life. I feel like all this is an act because he said that he will go out in the street and do it again if they let him out of jail. You're trying to make yourself seem like you're human, like, oh yeah, this is wrong, this is wrong, but I had this compulsion. So stop that compulsion. If you take accountability for it, if you if you regret it, if you feel bad, if you didn't enjoy the killing, so why do it? If you enjoy doing all these things and you had excitement when this little boy told you his age and when you're being interviewed, it still looked like you're trying to hide your excitement. You are utterly insane. Please comment down below and let me know, do you think he was just born this way and nothing triggered him at all? Or was he born normally and all of these terms of events triggered him? Or was it a mixture of both? Please let me know because I am interested. I love hearing other people's opinions because this man want to go and say, and, th and, and this is another reason why like I think it's bullshit. I feel like he's trying to protect his family. I feel like he's trying to protect his mother and his father because he keeps saying I'm not like I'm not putting the blame on the police. I'm not putting the blame on my mom or my dad. The only person that I'm putting the blame on is me. But it's like in the series when his dad visited him and his dad was asking him why, why this? And he was like, I don't know. I don't know. And the series, he's like, bullshit. You're going to have to, like, come on. Like, you're not about to just give me this phony ass answer. Like, what is it? Why? What caused it? And then he want to go and say, well, I was thinking about it a lot. 
and maybe it was because of the roadkill that you used to show me and then and and then the father was like oh come on you can't put this shit on me this isn't my fault this and this and that because he truly believed that his wrongdoing was all because of his mom he felt like the reason why Jack turned out this way is because of his mom. He even said in the series, other than taking the pills, she never even held him. So imagine that shit. You don't have that connection with your fucking mom? Like, she's getting interviewed and she has somebody else talking for her too? Like, it's, it's just... It's sus. Okay, so I finished the rest of the look off camera because I don't have anything else to say about this this was a very hard video for me to film i wanted to get this out the way this whole jeffrey dama thing and ugh, move on from it and then next tuesday i'm gonna be talking about the new marilyn monroe movie so i'm gonna have to do i'm gonna have to do a little more research with the marilyn monroe movie because i i'm, I'm not gonna spoil it i'm not gonna spoil it but I just need to, do, based on the movie, I need to do more research because, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a beautiful positive comment down below. If you guys are interested in whatever I put on my face, it's going to be in the description box down below. And if you guys want a tutorial on this natural, everyday, kind of soft look, let me know. But yeah, see you guys.